Hi, in this video I will explain how to avoid getting flat tires, especially if you are using tires with tubes, but the same principle goes for tubeless tires. It is a well kept secret in the industry and no uh, racing cyclists or bicycle salesmen or uh, tire manufacturers or patch kit manufacturers will tell you this and I have decided to disclose it publicly now. The most effective way to avoid flat tires is to look where you are riding. I'm not joking, you can laugh here, but I'm not joking. I, I, I see surprisingly huge number of people who miss that. It's, it's very obvious, it sounds stupid, but it really is effective. If you pay attention to where you are riding, you will usually be able to see if there are any glass shards or sharp shiny metal objects and other things that break and that, that can cut your tires. And in my experience, uh, I find a lot of things on the ground. Uh, pocket knives, Swiss Army knives, money, uh, different kinds of tools, all sorts of stuff. Because I have a tendency to look carefully at where I'm riding and that helps me avoid flats. My friends who get a lot of flats never find anything on the ground. So it's not a scientific method, but I firmly believe this to be true and it is very effective to just mind where you're going and the results are really miraculous. And now I'll talk a bit more about flats. Uh, one thing, uh, uh, why do rear tires get flats more often than the front tires? Uh, sharp objects that, that are on the road are usually lying flat because their geometry here, this is like a very, sh very long, very big uh, nail, it's easier to see. You cannot make it stand upright, it will always have a tendency to fall down flat. But when a front tire rolls over this, it will be able to get it to bounce and to get up just as much as it's needed to get punctured into the rear tire, to stab the rear tire. So that is one of the reasons why uh, rear tire flats are more uh, common, except if you're riding in areas that have a lot of those thorns, I think they're called goat head in English, or goat's head, that have uh, like uh, three or four different thorns at different angles, so no matter how you put them, they will always have at least one thorn pointing upwards. If you ride in those areas, you will get most flats on your front tire, because it will pick up all of those. First, I've had uh, my front tire pick up two or three in just one, one move, one go <laughs> of a few meters. So no, no in the rear, but the front one got really nicely decorated. And the way to avoid flats in those areas is to learn how those, uh, those uh, plants look. I will look, Google the Latin name for it and uh, put it so it's universal and you can find images. I'll try to put it in the, in, in, on the screen somewhere. And uh, just look when you see those trees, be mindful, maybe get off your bike until you pass that area. <laughs> thread lightly, they can also stick into soles of your boots or or whatever you have or if you're barefoot it's not very very comfortable. So that's that's an exception. And another thing when the flats happen most often it's a rainy night and that's not because of Murphy's law even though it is the most inconvenient time to have a flat but uh, when it's raining and it's night, it's more difficult to see sharp objects. Sometimes they are beneath a small pond. If you're, even if you're riding on pavement, there are some often small ponds, like shallow ones, but enough to co cover some uh, glass shards or something like that. And when it's wet, water acts as a lubricant, so it's a lot easier for them to puncture. I will demonstrate that in a minute, but just one more thought. Uh, even if a glass shard does not puncture the tire immediately, when it's wet, it is a lot more likely to stick to the tire and as the wheel spins it might get a bit loose like if it gets flat stuck and then it gets a bit like it's going to be shaken off and when the wheel comes to the ground then it's just at the right angle to puncture it finally. So that's another reason why you get more flats on uh, in, when riding in the rain on, on average statistically speaking. Now let's see how the dry cutting versus wa water cutting. I have a not very sharp scalpel and here I have a tube and I will try to make a cut. It's not going very well. Not very effective, but let's try to lubricate this.
it's doing a lot better. If we make the tire wet as well, of course soapy water does even more be better effects, but when you're riding in the rain, you can see that the cut is deeper and it's more severe. And when we take the dry part, let's try to dry this as well. Water does act as a lubricant, quite good, quite effective. It does uh, work for bicycle chains. As long as it's raining and wet, you don't need to have a lubricated bicycle chain. Of course, you should lubricate it once you stop. But here, it's not, I'm not able to cut it, nor nearly as deeply and as easily as I'm able to use, to do on the, on the part that it's wet. And let's try this again. I got all the way to the steel of this very easily. So I, I'm, uh, you can try this at home. Don't take my word for it. Of course, there's a mechanical and physical explanation why this works so effectively and why tires get punctured more easily when you're riding in the rain. So uh, I think I've, oh yes, of course, I forgot, uh, sorry, uh, to make this more complete and more boring and tedious and longer, tire prevention, uh, protective tires and the flat prevention. Let's deal that with that. Uh, there are uh, some tires that have uh, flat protection. They are not flat proof, they are flat resistant. That's important to note as uh, I have painfully discovered on a rainy night, of course, when else. So even the most popular model, Schwalbe Marathon Plus, that have very good uh, uh, puncture protection, they have a layer of hard rubber and in reinforced with some Kevlar beneath the, the thread where, you, where the tire is, like the, beneath the black thread I have like several layers. I will try to put some picture of cross section of those tires. They are puncture resistant and when you dry, ride in thorn ridden areas, they are a good idea and I've used them in such areas with great effectiveness and you just pull, pull the thorns out with your hand but you don't get a flat. And uh, again, they're not flat proof but just flat resistant and highly resistant. Their, their downsides are heavier, a lot harder so it's a lot less comfortable to ride with those tires and they're a bit more difficult to mount and dismount for when you do get a flat. So, I prefer looking where I'm riding and using regular tires, but when I go to uh, goat's head infested areas to avoid walking and patching tires too much, I like to use those kinds of tires. Thankfully, goat's head is not very widely spread in my area still. Uh, also, I want to talk about uh, tubeless tires. They have a sealant inside of them and you can also buy sealant and put it into regular tires with, with tubes and that's also advertised and sold. That sealant is effective for smaller holes. It manages to be pushed with the air pressure through the hole and then when it gets to contact with open air it, uh, or whatever outside elements, it dries and makes a sort of a patch and that works. But for uh, bigger holes or if a tire gets moved off a rim or something and you lose pressure, it's not... Uh, uh, mighty, it's not uh, uh, unfallible, how to say it, it will not work always and when it does not work you are uh, certain to have a lot of mess because it's gooey, sticky and you have to work with it and sometimes uh, there is the only way is to put a tube inside until you get to a garage to properly inflate the tubeless tires. So if you're using tubeless tires with sealant it, it can help but it's not uh, uh, it does not always help, so be prepared to get dirty, sticky and carry a spare tube just in case. So, and those sealants can sometimes block the valve, so if you park a bicycle and leave it overnight, make sure that the valve is on the top so that nothing does, doesn't, nothing drips inside the valve of that sealant. That's also another thing to, to consider. So, and also tire liners, I almost forgot those, they look like uh, some uh, radioactive colored tube that's not all round but it's just like a, a patch that you put beneath the tire uh, and uh, over the tube like in, in between the tube and the tire and they are effective at stopping uh, some thorns or glass shards 
just like puncture resistant tires and I prefer um, using puncture resistant tires even though they are heavy and uh, uh, roll a bit worse and uh, are less comfortable because those tire liners are, are a lot of a hassle to put in place and they also add weight so you're basically doing the same with more hassle so uh, that's about it thank you for watching and cheers